Well, hello, and welcome back to Tucson Tuesday. And today we have an interesting knife here. This is a Tepe Designs knife. And some people might think that uh, this looks quite familiar. And that's because this is much more of a production version of um, uh, a knife that uh, Tepe has had out there for a few years called the Killage, or K-I-L-I-J. Uh, and this is kind of the, uh, the production version of it that just kind of came out. Where is, there it is. I was looking for my little shimmy to, uh, maybe clean a little bit off the blade here. So, uh, the original, uh, production kind of, uh, guys on here, um, Tucson wasn't, uh, involved in. Uh, it had either an M390 blade uh, or a Damascus. I had a couple of options. Um, this wasn't um, micarta on the original. It was carbon fiber. And on the back side, the pocket clip was different, having a, a, a large ceramic ball um, through it rather than uh, this kind of a smaller arrow sort of guy here. That, and it looked like there was a little bit more uh, contouring and uh, rounding. But uh, otherwise, yeah, this is a little bit more of a uh, um, more of an affordable uh, production version of the knife, and uh, it's a pretty good knife. Um, it might not be my absolute favorite for uh, some EDC tasks, but let's go ahead and uh, talk about some of that sort of stuff here. We got this micarta; it's good quality micarta, has some nice texture to it, and we can see it does have a a, a nice thread count to it. Now it is uh, a little interesting, on mine in particular, it is um, quite nice and flush up top here, but as uh, this line kind of comes back, it seems to uh, creep up in height just a little bit. Uh, yeah, we can see that, where it's not quite uh, all that flush. Um, you know, it's only on one side there. Um, but because of that, it's probably really easy for me to be able to uh, take care of that uh, myself in house by taking this uh, this inlay off and just slightly sanding a little bit there on the back so that it can still sit flat. So, you know, if that was something that uh, actually really really bothered me, well then, uh, you know, that would be a very very easy fix for it. So we have these um, kind of milled sections on here, uh, and they do have a bit of grit to them. They're not um, super crazy rounded over. We have a uh, full-length backspacer, which, um, you know, I was, sadly, I'm uh, appreciating more and more on two suns because they, their blade grinds have the, uh, the edge way too close to the, uh, uh, the spine of the handle when it's uh, closed up. So I might call a snaggle tooth, but this one avoids that by kind of having that guy there. And uh, we can take a look on the inside there. And we do have a groove for it that uh, can kind of accommodate the, uh, the blade going just a little bit closer to the, uh, that spine of the handle there. Uh, we also have a crenellated um, lock bar uh, relief, which is uh, interesting. And it definitely goes with the original design. However, as we can see here with the pocket clip, um, moving over to this particular pocket clip, um, getting this in and out of the pocket, um, the pocket clip itself moves out of the way decently, but it forces, uh, these crenellations up there. This thing is, um, it can do some serious damage to some pockets there, and it's not something that will slightly loosen up, um, like if you were, uh, doing something, um, that had a, a crazy amount of texture to it, like the bi-directional texturing here on the Spyderco or uh, any of the uh, peel ply texture uh, G10 or something like that. Uh, this guy will just basically shred your pants um, for all eternity, amen, unfortunately. Um, something that I'm pretty sure that the ceramic ball um, and kind of a wider pocket clip on the original probably didn't suffer all that much from however i don't own one nor have i actually um been able to uh handle one um myself so uh, i can't really say for sure just kind of what i would assume they're they've been long sold out for uh, probably a couple of years now uh, there might be 
another run uh, at some point in the future. But he's also made, you know, newer designs and stuff like that. Uh, this is also one of the newer blades that uses N690. Looks like I got number 56 here out of the, uh, the first production run. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, the N690 here really didn't take much effort to, uh, sharpen at all. Um, you know, uh, me and probably, uh, quite a few others have, uh, kind of given, uh, N690 a bit of a bad rap, um, because a lot of people really, really compare it to, uh, 440C, whereas it's, uh, it's kind of a combination sort of thing between 440C and VG10, maybe a little bit of, um, like 154CM, but it kind of, it functions a little bit more like, um, uh, somewhere around VG10 to maybe a little bit above, uh, but not quite up to 154CM, uh, from my experiences, uh, with these guys here. And, uh, yeah, because of that, this thing was, uh, really, really easy to, um, go ahead and sharpen up. Uh, I did, uh, well, I wouldn't really call it a reprofile. Uh, yeah, I might've changed it a degree or so, but this thing does not have a thin slicey, um, blade geometry. We can see we have a, uh, a mid saber grind sort of thing here, uh, lower down there at the top there, and it comes down like an axe. Uh, this is definitely not a, a laser beam cutter, um, but that being said, this knife is uh, much more designed to be um, used for some uh, offensive and uh, harder use kind of uh, things there. The plunge grind isn't something I'm hugely happy about, but uh, at least... We can uh, end up fixing that if we like, you know, using something like a, a little carbide burr there or something like that. Carve in a bit more of a, a sharpening choil. The, uh, the detent on this guy is nice and strong and crisp. And yeah, I'm nowhere near on the, uh, the lock bar. It takes quite a bit of force, but uh, once it releases, yeah, uh, this thing is coming out. So that's all sorts of good. We got some, uh, we got a few nice jumps on there. They're, uh, they're decently sharp, so I'm not having my fingers slip off of it or anything like that. Does have the, uh, the call out pivot collar on these guys. That's, uh, something that, uh, seems to be happening more and more on two sons. Doesn't bother me, but it does for some other folks. So, you know, I'll at least bring it up when it's, uh, necessary. And we do have a bit of a lock bar access here. It might not look like a whole lot, uh, but it does have a, a, a decent shelf out there. Um, I generally would have no problems closing this up, even with some gloves on. So all that's all sorts of great. And because the, uh, the micarta insert is uh, only on one side, we don't really have any trouble of uh, the pocket clip um, that would uh, chew into... Um, the uh, the inlay material there, so that's all sorts of good. So yeah, uh, a little bit of uh, kind of my personal preference. I generally do like uh, jumping on almost all of my knife blades if I can get it there. But um, yeah, this thing still ends up uh, locking decently in my hand, so um, this one's probably a little bit less necessary than I get from a lot of other knives, but still. Yeah, we got uh, the standard saber grip is nice. Um, of course, we got the uh, the uh, good old hammer grip there. Pinch grip is all sorts of nice. This uh, thing right there just nestles into the hand in case you want to uh, do any of that sort of stuff. Uh, having that uh, reverse grip uh, that you can also use for uh, you know your uh, chest lever uh, kind of cuts and stuff like that. Not bad as well, um, just due to the uh, the contouring and everything we got out there on the back. And the uh, flipper tab doesn't really get in the way all that much. It can uh, maybe start to uh, have a little bit of contact with my um, skin flap here between my thumb and index finger. But because in those cuts, all your pressure is uh, being pushed on your uh, back fingers, no problems there at all. And uh, because it doesn't have a beak on it, that's also pretty darn comfortable. So, yeah, this is a pretty interesting knife here. Uh, something that I had noticed with mine, and it might be so minuscule, 
that uh, it won't come out all that great on the camera, but I will at least try, is it looks like the uh, the grinds um, between uh, either side here were slightly off, whereas I'm seeing it basically starts, uh, yeah, like back here, whereas if I draw uh, a, a line across, it comes up a little bit there. Uh, something I haven't seen from um, almost any other night. Uh, something I haven't seen from Tucson before. But uh, also something I haven't really seen from many other companies outside of Migron's um, budget knives. And, uh, you know, it's uh, absolutely perfect. Uh, it doesn't affect the cutting at all. Uh, the grinds, uh, when you're looking at them uh, on either side, well, it... Everything functions correctly. It just looks just slightly off uh, between the uh, the grinds here, uh, or at least this, yeah, this very, very small kind of grind here on either side are just a little bit different from each other rather than being absolutely symmetrical. So, yeah, I mean, that's uh, maybe it was... Uh, a difficult grind or something like that and just kind of a uh, concession that was needed to uh, get this knife down to the uh, the production level that it's at I don't know or maybe this was kind of a one-off and nobody else is going to uh, have that problem or notice that problem because you know a lot of people don't when they get a new knife or something like that might not ogle over it and uh, fondle it and everything like that for a good few days to be super super familiar with it so I don't know but uh, that's about the only kind of uh, negative things that I could really say about that is um, kind of slightly off on uh, that grind there. And the pocket uh, clip along with the uh, the crenellated um, backspacer, or uh, not backspacer, but um, the uh, lock bar uh, uh, relief can definitely destroy some pants or something like that. Uh, wouldn't have been all that bad to uh, have basically done this uh, internally there um, to uh, end up dealing with that. And uh, they did do a, a decent amount of uh, weight relieving on the inside there. So there wasn't really all that much of a reason not to outside of the fact that, well, this was the way that it was on the original. And this is a production version of that. So, yeah, uh, keeping all of that um, as close as possible was probably... Uh, all sorts of in everyone's interest for that. But uh, there we go. What's the number on this? The 426 here. There we go. So, yes, 4 millimeter blade stock thickness. Quite thick, but still the same as the, uh, the original there. I measured this at 3.36 uh, inches uh, between basically... Um, the, uh, the edge of the, uh, the handle scales there and the tip of the blade, that'll be 85.3 millimeters. And 0 0.55 of an inch thick, or a little over half an inch thick. Uh, exactly 14 millimeters, looks like. Yes. And the weight on it is 4.46 ounces, or 126 and a half grams. Which, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely not nothing, but I think probably... Uh, what ends up giving it a little bit more of that weight is that full-size backspacer, which I'm honestly almost always appreciative when they are there, especially on some Tucson's due to uh, their tendency to uh, undergrind some knives to uh, make them uh, almost kind of dangerous. And this one luckily doesn't have any of those problems. But yeah, let's go ahead and do some uh, blade size comparisons here. Uh, why not? Since it's out, let's go ahead and uh, do the uh, the Mannix 2XL. That's a pretty big knife. There we go. There's the Spyderco PM2. Keeping along with the PM things, there's the uh, PM3 and the Endura 4. Much longer knife overall. Alrighty, and let's go for some benchmates. There we go. There's the uh, Griptilian. That's the word I'm looking for. And here we are with the 940. Fairly similar with the proportions there on the 940. Well, I suppose the same on the Griptilian there, which they are similar in um, 
handle to blade ratio kind of things going on there. Uh, here we are with the bug out. And here's the rat number one, much larger knife. This is probably uh, in between the rat one and the rat two. And sure, one more. We got the uh, Civivi Elementum. <laughs> Toss all of my uh, blade comparison knives over on the side here. Get them out of the way. So yeah, here we are. This is the, uh, the TS-426. Uh, if you were uh, interested in um, getting uh, one of uh, Tepe's designs that wasn't previously uh, made as a uh, Tucson knife, um, but this is a little bit more of a uh, production model, well, there you go. And this one doesn't use D2 steel. It uses um, the, uh, the N690, which um, quite a bit easier to sharpen um, up than... Uh, than the uh, the D2 and stuff like that that they uh, use on quite a few other knives there. That's kind of one of the uh, the nice things about um, N690. Uh, I basically reprofiled, quote unquote, this thing down to um, uh, 20 degrees per side. And we can see we still have a, uh, a, a decently large uh, shoulder, uh, but nothing uh, super crazy up there which is definitely what I would have gotten if I'd have gone to a 17 or even a steeper at like a 15 degree angle or something like that. Uh, but 20 seems to uh, work just about right for, you know, the blade grind and everything that this is. And 20 degrees is pretty darn good, uh, is a pretty darn good angle as far as I've been able to tell for uh, N690. And it seems to do a, a pretty good job. I haven't done a, a full crazy sharpness um, test to it to um, to be dull or whatever, but I have done uh, a decent amount of cutting with it um, to the point where I've wanted to uh, strop it back up and strops up uh, pretty darn quickly and nicely. So that, that ends up working out all right. But um, yeah, this thing is, uh, it's a thicker grind. So, um, you know, don't expect uh, this thing to uh, cut like a laser beam, something like you might expect from like a Civivi Elementum. The uh, blade geometry is just different. So, alrighty, there we go with all of that. Uh, now, it's the uh, time of the video where we go ahead and take this guy apart. So let's go ahead and do that. I will pull this screw out and shove out that thing a little bit. Uh, the Chicago screw there, so I can wiggle out that little guy there. This guy does have a, a little bit of a, a strange uh, amounts of um, kind of pressures or something like that on there. Uh, I did add in some, uh, some Loctite uh, after the fact, so that's going to be something that uh, is going to be Fun to try to deal with here. Let's see. Yeah, this is going to be one of those fun ones here. It's not all that much of a big deal, but it is something that uh, I do need. A, uh, where is my hammer? You don't hear that all that often, but... Uh, I do need my hammer, and it is not where I put it. Yeah, it is. I had a sharpening stone system on top of it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I basically need to uh, tap that out of there. I'm not, not saying that's something that uh, everybody wants to do or needs to do, but it's something that uh, I will need to do. I'm just going to go ahead and use one of these uh, orange sticks here. They're mostly designed for uh, dealing with uh, cuticles on fingernails, but uh, hey, they're nice and soft, and uh, it will allow me to uh, actually get that out there. Once we do have uh, some of the pressure off of it and everything like that, yeah, the pivot is still just kind of a, kind of a little funky in there, but the rest of it's fine. But yeah, we can see we have uh, some... Uh, cutouts on both sides here, including on the lock bar side, which I think might alleviate some of that, uh, 
uh, pocket shredding here if that was uh, done internally there, which since they've done extensive milling on that side, was definitely an option. But yeah, a lot of this kind of um, uh, tightness between this is, uh, I think, maybe just a little bit mostly uh, attributed to the uh, that little micarta inlay there. But uh, either way, you don't really need to uh, take them apart too often. So. Uh, there we go. There's the uh, stop pen for him. That guy back in there. No detent ramp on here. Makes sense. The original didn't either. But yeah, there we go. Yep, just make sure I actually had everything uh, in place. <laughs> there we go. Got the pivot actually all the way through there. I shouldn't have because I missed a stupid. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Nothing to worry about here. Okay. And as long as I'm actually uh, careful, I won't end up hurting myself. There we go. It's never fun to cut yourself. I don't know, maybe some uh, emo females in uh, high school might think otherwise. Uh, I'd, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe that was uh, kind of in poor taste. Uh, I, I do kind of have sympathy for someone who ends up having those kind of uh, problems or anything like that. All I'm really trying to say is uh, I don't really like... Um, cutting myself but at least if i'm going to uh, accidentally do something like that i like it done on a nicely freshly sharpened knife so that uh, it can heal up nice and quick i don't have to worry about any of that sort of stuff rather than you know possibly some rusty razor blades that they have that they were shaving their legs with or some other kind of mall ninja dagger kind of bullshit or whatever <laughs> Wow, I really went off on a, on a crazy tangent. Uh, I apologize for any of that. Either way, uh, all I'm saying is, uh, you know, don't cut yourself. You know, it's uh, a knife is designed to uh, separate things that are hopefully not the user. That's not really their intent. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there we go. There's the TS-426 Killage in uh, N690 steel rather than D2, so it is different. It's not. Going to hold an edge quite as much or quite as decent as uh, D2, but it will hold a finer edge for longer than D2 does. Um, if you're used to a lot of D2, uh, this guy, yeah. This guy I had used in a previous video here, the TS-194. Uh, D2 ends up holding an edge quite a long time, but this thing has some pretty large carbides on there. So um, you end up cutting with nothing but carbides after a while as the rest of the, uh, the blade edge has eroded. So these things hold like a nice proper, um, you know, working edge for an incredibly long time. Whereas this, uh, this guy and a lot of uh, the other steels that aren't quite like that um, do hold a finer edge for a longer amount of time. But they do give up the ghost quite a bit quicker than D2 does for just actually getting some cuts done but also a lot easier to sharpen all right yeah nothing that anybody uh, doesn't already know but all righty as always <laughs> i appreciate y'all for watching have yourself a wonderful rest of your day and uh hopefully don't cut yourself yeah uh, i would appreciate that at least and of course if you made it this far especially after the weird rant about people cutting themselves um, you know, like, comment, and subscribe, all that good stuff. I'd appreciate that. But, uh, you know, that's your prerogative. If you're, uh, too lazy or you're watching this on a TV and it's too much of a pain in the ass to end up doing that, I hear you and I do the same thing. So, alrighty, I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>